Welcome to this video on the electrochemistry topic. Today we're going to look at the standard hydrogen electrode. Now this has been mentioned in a previous video, uh, but now it's really start time to look in detail about what this standard hydrogen electrode actually is. So we've got a schematic uh, image on the left and a real picture on the right hand side and I'll attempt to label them simultaneously so you can see what it looks like in practice and in schematic form. So the first thing to realize is that the key thing about the standard hydrogen electrode is the reaction that you are studying. So this is the redox equilibrium between an H plus ion and hydrogen gas. Now in any uh, half cell, if we're going to be measuring standard electrode potentials, then we need to have both these species present. And that's what we've got here. We've got a solution consisting of H plus solution, usually some strong acid with a counter ion that won't be oxidized or reduced, H plus solution with a concentration of H plus of one mole per decimeter cubed. Those are the standard conditions it operates under. <clears throat> now we also need some hydrogen gas and that is supplied here via this pipe so you can see the hydrogen coming in there or hydrogen coming in there and what we want is a one atmosphere pressure of hydrogen which is uh, 1.01 times 10 to the 5 pascals in SI units and that is potentially provided from a cylinder or perhaps it's being continuously generated by a reaction like for example a metal reacting with an acid now this is just some glass housing here that is just making sure that the hydrogen gas actually gets down into where the acid is because obviously hydrogen very low density so you need to really make sure it goes in there. And then what we've got in the centre here uh, is that we need to somehow connect this up to a circuit so eventually we're going to want to connect this up with some kind of wire um, but because neither H plus ions nor hydrogen gas conduct we can't just use, um, we, we need something to carry the electrons away with if we're going to ever actually um, measure the potential difference. So what we use for this is a platinum wire. So you can see it coming there, or this black here is a platinum wire. Now why do we choose a platinum wire? Well, the main reason is because it is inert. And what that means is that there is almost no electrons on that wire because of the reaction of PT2 plus plus an electron, two electrons going to platinum solid. Now that, ele that equilibrium is essentially entirely over to the platinum side because platinum has a very low tendency to lose electrons. And as a result, all the electrons that gather here are going to be due to the reaction between the H plus ions and the electrons and the hydrogen gas. So that's why platinum is used. At the bottom here, and you can just about see it in the diagram, so this object here, or you can see it there, um, so this is known as platinum black. And it's essentially, you can tell there, look, it's black in the image. Um, and platinum black is essentially porous platinum. Why do we have that on there? Well, if we had a very flat and smooth surface, then the hydrogen gas is going to struggle to actually form on the surface. Gases need some pores or something to nucleate. It's the same reason you put anti-bumping granules into uh, reaction vessels when you're refluxing or um, why sometimes you get very, very big bubbles when you're boiling liquids um, at home. Uh, so what this porous platinum does is it provides a lot of surface for this gas to nucleate on and what that means is that this reaction can rapidly go forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward, backwards and an equilibrium can be quickly established so you can measure the potential differences very quickly. Well, that's the standard hydrogen electrode. 
that we use in order to measure standard electrode potentials. The final thing just to mention is that we need a standard temperature to work at. So the standard hydrogen electrode is always used at a temperature of 298 Kelvin.